Hey there, in this video, we're going to be looking at adding a micro interaction to the navigation menu that we've already developed. We're gonna be giving it this nice little spin in, spin out animation when people hover on top of it. Stick around to see how we can do just that. Hi, my name is Kevin, and if you're new here to my channel, it's all about learning how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. Before I get into this week's video, I just wanna say that I do have swag now. I was wearing a similar shirt the last video or not long ago anyway, uh, but I only talked about it at the end, but it is currently on sale now for the launch period. It's a nice way to help support my channel. I do not make very much off of it, um, really not a lot. And especially if you use the promo code launch before the end of January, you'll get an extra 15% off. So if you like the shirt, if you think it looks good, it, just lets people know that you like to make the internet and make it look awesome while you're at it. So you can check that out. I'm a really bad salesperson, so this is really uncomfortable for me, but that's okay. We're gonna move on from that and move into what I am comfortable with, which is CSS. And as I said, we're gonna be looking at the micro interaction of the hamburger spin. And the reason why we're doing it, which is really important, is as we talked about last week, micro interactions are important to help give feedback to the user. And in this case, the feedback the user is getting when they went to close the hamburger menu, it was non-existent. It doesn't even really feel like you can click on it. It feels almost like there's a problem there. So I wanted to add this animation in to make it really clear that they could click on it. And then once I did that, I realized that, well, we need to be able to keyboard navigate as well. So we make sure that there's some focus states that we have the focus states maybe different than just putting a ring around stuff. Uh, we explore the Mozilla focus, which is different from the Google Chrome one and all of that. When I say Mozilla, it's prefix Mozilla, it's the Firefox one. Um, so we're looking at all of that in this video. Let's jump into it. Okay, so just remember where we are. Uh, we can see that it, when I click on that, it opens and we can close that just like that. Um, one thing I've done since the last video is I have added a little transition to the links here. So let's just get that really quickly. Uh, here you can see I've added this transition right there just so it goes a little bit more. And I've also um, added the focus state here just in case someone is uh, on their keyboard uh, and they're going through here with the keyboard instead that they can navigate through quite easily that way as well. Well, now when they use the keyboard to navigate to our X, that's a little bit more of an issue. And it's even when we hover on top of here, it's a bit of an issue right now because you can kind of guess that um, it's something that you can interact with, but it's a little bit hard to tell. And you also get that, that thing that's coming through there. It's a bit of the focus state coming from uh, Firefox that we're going to fix in a minute. Um, but what the big thing here is I don't like that when we hover on top of it, it almost looks like something's being deselected or like we're, we know we're not clicking on home. It's obvious that we can click on it, but this is the type of thing that uh, makes a this is where micro interactions come in. It takes the uncertainty out of something. It's giving fee immediate feedback and not just like, oh, I think I can click on the X and oh yes, it did work and then everything is normal. We wanna give immediate feedback on something. Now I realize it's a hamburger menu. A lot of these, they won't be using a mouse. They'll probably be using their finger and some of this will go of the window. So I'm just gonna come down here where I have my open hamburger. And that's what we'd originally used if I turn that off um, and we take a look. That's what I was using. See, now it just makes like a, uh, a plus sign. We don't really want a plus sign. We want is to have it um, be the X. So that's what, there we go. Now we can see that by turning it 45 degrees, it gives us that X right there. Now what I wanted to do is when I hover on top, we want it to spin. So we have my open hamburger and we're gonna add in an open hamburger, but I want it when I'm hovering on my open. So when I hover on open, if you remember, open is actually a class that's being added directly to uh, this, this button here. Uh, another thing I changed, this used to be a div. I made this a really long time ago, it was a few years ago. And I realized it was down here originally, um, but also it was set up as a div, which meant we couldn't interact with it with the keyboard by default. Why bother doing that? So I switched it over to a button so we can tab onto it and, and select it. Makes it a little bit more um, accessible. We're gonna look at other ways we can make this into a really accessible drop-down menu, but we'll be doing that in future videos. Um, and not right now, we're gonna focus on those micro interactions for now. Um, so when I click this and it turns into that, it's this menu toggle is getting the class of open on here. So if you do wanna make it a little bit more clear, you could even write like dot, uh, even here, like say we did dot menu toggle 
with, you know, it's a menu toggle and open has the class of hover. Um, so if you find that a little bit more easier to read, by all means, we could do that. But I'm just going to leave it with my single class of open. So when my open has a hover or when we hover on my open, the hamburger inside of it is going to do something. So I'm going to transform, rotate, and way back, it was a long time ago now, uh, I learned about the turn unit thanks to Wes Boss. Um, now you'd think you could do, well, we could even do one turn. Let's go and look, but it's not going to do quite what you think. It's kind of interesting because of the way that it's overriding the 45 degrees here. Um, so when I go on there, you can see how it, see how it's spinning like that. So we're getting this cool spin, but when it's finished spinning, it's going to the plus sign. It's because it's finishing at one. It's, it's the same here as having 360 degrees. So it's ignoring the original 45 that I'd had. And the reason the animation is even working in the first place is because of when we set all this up, I set up a trans, um, a transition on my transform here. So it's still using that same transition on the transform. You can see that's, uh, on my hamburgers there. So for this to work, we need it to be like a 45 degree. So you'd think maybe it's two five, but two five isn't uh, enough because it's gonna look exactly the same if you do that. So we actually need a 0.125 for that to work. If you're using the turn unit, you could definitely still use degrees here. I just find once you get past 360, it gets a little cumbersome. So I do like using the turn unit. So there we go, we can see it's opening. And when I hover on top, I get that feedback. Uh, immediately makes me realize that I can definitely click on that. And when I click, it spins and closes back down. Now it's really important this is on the open class um, because if I used the, instead of open class, if I use the menu toggle just like this, we would have got this really awkward thing where this is spinning and then it stops at that weird angle. And then it's, you know, the whole thing, when we click there, it, you know, that's kind of weird, right? Um, so that's why I only wanted it target in the open state where I can uh, actually click on that. And I do like that little spinny thing. Again, it's just giving a little bit of feedback, but I do like that little touch where it spins and then spins back when the menu is opening up thanks to the hover state that's on there. So just a little bit of extra feedback to really let the user know what's going on. And these are the types of things micro interactions are really good at. It's these little subtle things and the, the, the fast spin there maybe is not so subtle, but it's these little interactions. In this case, the user hovering over something or tabbing, because this will work if I tab, tab, if I tab back, oh, it won't work because I only did the <laughs> oh, uh, the hover. So here we can give the same feedback if somebody, if we by giving it the focus state and put the comma there. And if we go and check it out, we should be able to tab on and open it. And you can see it spins. I can tab through. And when I tab back onto there, you can see it spins. So it grabs your attention to let us get into there. Now on Chrome, you would have the outline. Now I do think it's important that we do have um, an outline on it in some sense. Because when we're in this state here, um, you can see that even there's, if you might notice in Firefox, you get this little black box. So I think what we're going to do here, just to finish this up and make it really good, um, is we're going to add a few extra little things here for our focus state to really make sure that it's working. Uh, so I'm going to do my... Um, and what we're going to do is I'm actually going to come... This is where it's going to get a little messy. <laughs> but I'm going to do it all here because it's part of my menu toggle. So uh, what we want to do here is I'm going to say that my menu toggle focus, I'm actually going to give it a focus state. You're going to see what I'm going to do here. Uh, let's give this an outline, but I'm going to overwrite the default ones. So we're going to say like four pixels solid. And I want to get that color that I have right here because it's going to stand out a lot. So that's my white color. So if I save there and we come take a look, you can see it makes that big box around it. I can open it up. And now that box is still there until I come off. Um, and I don't know if I really want that to be there, especially if we're clicking on stuff, like when you click and then it stays there, even when we're hovering, I find it looks a little bit awkward. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to say that we have our outline there. Uh, we also have that Firefox gray sort of dotted line coming in. So we're going to also add onto here the menu toggle Moz uh, focus inner. And that one actually is a border. So we're going to say border of zero, just should get rid of it. There we go. So now it looks should look the same on all of our browsers. Small little interjection here from Kevin in the future. Uh, luckily, I caught this before the video went live, but I made a big mistake right here when I did this. So I just want to say because this is for uh, Firefox only, Chrome doesn't understand it. So while that works here and everything is fine, anytime you have these comma separated selectors, if a browser doesn't understand one of them, it just ignores the entire set. So uh, while it's looking good here, 
in Firefox where I was doing things. This is why it's really important to check things in multiple browsers. Um, if I come in, I look at the same thing in Chrome right here. You'll notice that it's the default blue box that Chrome always gives and there's nothing on it the rest of the time. So the simple selection or the simple solution for that is to just have this over on its own with the border of zero set there. Uh, take the comma off and there we go. Um, so we could set it up that way. If I save that now in Firefox, it's still working just like it was before. But if we go back to Chrome now here, it's working back the way it was as well. So just really important that we keep um, something like this. Can't put it in with the comma separated selector because it Chrome doesn't know what it is. So again, it ignores the complete set. For the rest of this video, you will see them put together, but I just wanted to make that really clear. Uh, and we will be working on this in future videos. So in the future ones, it will be set up properly like this and it'll be like this over in the code pen. So a big, my apologies for that. Let's get back into the rest of the video. And then what we can do is we can add in uh, this so we can put that back there but when it's open. So if we have a menu toggle that is open, um, I do need to be, um, all right, let's just see, but I have a feeling if we do outline none, uh, it's there. Oh, it's turning off. Okay. We don't need it. So we can just say when our open is focused that it is going to turn off the outline. Um, so then if we're here and we tab on, you can see, so here as I go through and then as I shift tab back, it will spin and we close it. It's sort of indicating that we, you know, that button is selected and then we can open it back up and tab through our navigation. So there we go. I think that for this video is enough. So there we have it. I think it is looking pretty good. I'm really happy with how that looks. I hope you like the turn unit. That's one of my favorite little things uh, that we can do with CSS. It's one of those cool little tricks that not everybody knows about. I didn't even know about it for the longest time. In next week's video, we're gonna be continuing to work on this. We're gonna build in to make each item when we open the navigation, I want them to come in and sort of disappear uh, one at a time instead of just all at once. We're gonna have one come in after the other one and then fade out one after the other very quickly, but it gives it this nice feeling of motion of direction of closing and opening. It helps bring with that circle coming in and out. Um, I think it works really well. So we're gonna be looking at how we can do that next week. So if you haven't yet subscribed and you don't wanna miss that video, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, maybe even that notification bell if you are so inclined for those things. And I guess that's it. So thank you very much for watching. A huge thank you to my patrons for helping support everything I do here on YouTube. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome. And get a t-shirt to let people know that's what you like to do. <laughs> Bye.